What's up travelers? It's a Liz and Derek from Means to Travel and today we just got in our car from our Airbnb in Bristol and we are headed for a day trip to Bath which is one of our favorite towns in England. Yeah so we've been to Bath probably three to four times between the well together um, <laughs> and I think we've both been there separately as well so we really like going there and it's really close to Bristol so whether you're staying in Bath or staying in Bristol as a home base in the region it's easy to get to either one so definitely worth checking it out. Absolutely and there's a lot of really cool things to do and see in Bath great shopping and pretty good food so we're not entirely sure what's open right now during the pandemic and we're going to find out today so we are really looking forward to this trip to come. All right, come along with us to our journey to Bath. One of the crazy things about Bristol, in our opinion, is that they have roundabouts on top of certain bridges. <laughs> Here's one of them. So basically, one bridge goes one way, the other goes the other way, but they kind of tie them together into a roundabout structure, which is kind of cool. It looks like this. Gonna be on Bath Road. Yeah, we're gonna be on Bath Road, heading to Bath. And this is the River Avon that the roundabout is over. <laughs> All right. So we're headed that way, <laughs> eventually. Yep. Now, one thing about driving here is that it's not always gonna give you the right lane to be in because we want to be in the right most lane because we're turning right here. But uh something something to know. Something to know. Yeah so we're we're in the right hand lane. Um multiple lanes here. The but, folks like this truck here might be going um a different direction. But I'm going And we're on Bath Road. Hopefully that means we're uh, bath that means bound. We're, we're bath bound. And this car's getting a little bit of bath at the same time, isn't it? <laughs> we made it to Bath, but parking was crazy. So we got here right around noon, which of course is like prime lunch time. And we went to the South Gate parking garage that as we were coming in said it was supposed to have like 173 parking spots and it had zero unless you were handicapped. Um, so that was a bit off and we were bummed about that. Wasted a little bit of time, but now we just park at Avon Street and it's sunny. So let's go explore. Just like every tourist in Bath, our first stop is sushi. <laughs> um, so Liz had a hankering for sushi, knew that there's some good sushi here in Bath, so we came here, got some gyoza. We got a lot of more good food coming our way, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's dig in. I already ate one piece of this roll before we started to film because it looks so good. This is the crunchy salmon roll. It does look good. Cool. Salmon hockey. More rolls coming up. It started hailing outside momentarily, but it's finally letting up, I think, a little bit. This weather's been crazy. It's been like off and on rain, sun, hail. <laughs> but at least we're inside for it. And in the meantime, yummy, yummy sushi. It's really good. What do you think? Thank you. So, we got chicken buns. It's like a salad type thing. And it's got this yummy fried chicken looking stuff that we're gonna stuff in here. What's the sauce? Do you know? Looks like a spicy mayo or something. Yeah. You put any of the vegetables on there too, or are you just going straight at the chicken? Chicken. There's only one. Oh. So I'm gonna stuff this with full and then we'll split it. Okay. Some I'm gonna have to stop filming during that splitting moment. <laughs> oh, looks so good though. It's like a it's like an Asian taco. <laughs> Thank you. 
for you. It's like a fried chicken sandwich. I love the consistency of the bun. Dozo. Good stuff. You gonna share? <laughs> Promise. <laughs> So we may have over ordered a little bit with our hunger, um, but we are very excited for all of the things. The unagi roll just came out and unagi is actually the Japanese word for eel. And it's definitely not as popular in America to eat eel as it is in a lot of other cultures, including European cultures. But we find eel to actually be very tasty and the Japanese cover it with an eel sauce, which is very similar in my opinion and Derek's opinion to a barbecue sauce. So we love ordering this. It's kind of like a, it's like barbecue chicken and rice with avocado. Um, super, super good. All right, so our final dish is a chicken fried noodle dish. Um, we're, we're definitely slowing down. Uh, yeah, we're, we're both starting to slow down a bit and uh, let's see how much of this we can eat though. It looks delicious, it really does. So let's eat this thing. So we just left the sushi restaurant, but more specifically, I wanted to talk about all the different restaurants that I mentioned earlier that are in Bath. So there are loads of different types of cuisine here because this is such a tourist city and people from all over the world love to come here, see the historic Roman baths, um, the pump room, which was really popular. There's a Jane Austen center here and it's just a gorgeous town. So there's a lot of interest all over the world and you're going to see a lot more international tourists in Bath when you visit than probably a lot of other places around England other than London. So just wanted to say that we chose to eat sushi instead of British food just because it was a really good option. And now we're headed around to like a little walking tour of Bath starting with heading towards the old Roman baths, which we unfortunately did not get tickets in advance for, so we cannot get in today because it's like half term here in the UK, so like everybody's on holiday, kind of like a spring break would be in the US. But we're gonna go outside and take some pictures and see what there is to see from the outside and show you guys a little bit of footage from the last time that we did get to go to the Roman baths and had a great time. So, cheerio! Ah, so there was a reason why I just said cheerio. It's believed that Bath elites in the late 1700s used to summon their nearby sedan chairman by shouting, Chair Ho! in order to get around town in a covered chair that was carried by other men, much like a private taxi would be today. It was a status symbol, and Chair Ho! eventually evolved into the word cheerio that we hear today. This is the famous Georgian pump room, which houses a water pump enabling folks to drink the subjectively disgusting tasting minerally water coming straight from the hot springs below. For centuries, the water has been rumored to have health benefits, and the pump room has been the place to see and be seen in Bath. Dining at the restaurant is very popular for visitors, so be sure to book in advance. On its menu, you will find some tasty gourmet food, as well as loads of other, more pleasant beverages. Here is Bath Abbey, which was constructed with local Bath stone giving it its yellowish hue. It's a large, beautiful, and historic parish church of the Church of England that can seat up to 1,200 patrons. Right now we're standing in the main square in Bath, and behind me is the ancient Roman baths. There's a line you can see for that. And then a little bit to its right, you'll also see the line for the entrance to the pump room, which as I kind of mentioned earlier is a very popular restaurant now um, if you're visiting because it's mentioned in the Jane Austen book Northanger Abbey but back when Bath was kind of like a posh travel destination in the late 1700s early 1800s for English people um, that was definitely the place to like go and show your latest fashions and have tea. What's really neat is the bath behind me was, as I mentioned, created by the Romans. And it's this mineral bath that you can tour around and see all of this ancient Roman ruins as you go around and learn about the Roman culture when the Romans had invaded England. And over here is Bath Abbey, and all of it is like right by each other. You can see 
Um, if you're a tourist here, it's pretty easy to just go to all three all at once if you have planned in advance, unlike us, and make it work timing-wise. So we're just enjoying the beautiful views right now as, as a break between the rain showers. There's also oftentimes buskers here playing music. Right now, it's not right here where we're at. Um, a lot of times that we visited, we have seen them but there's some right outside of this courtyard area as well. So we were able to listen to some beautiful music as we approached. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to Derek's favorite bridge and bath that he takes photos of every time we're here, the Pulteney Bridge. If there's one bridge worth visiting when in Bath, it is the remarkable and highly photogenic Pulteney Bridge spanning the River Avon. A gorgeous example of Palladian architecture, this bridge was completed in 1774 and is one of only four bridges in the world with shops spanning both sides, the other three being in Florence, Venice, and Erfurt, Germany. Named after the influential Pulteney family, the bridge was built to connect the old city with an estate owned by the Pulteneys and thus allow the city to expand beyond the banks of the river. Okay, so over here, this is actually Pulteney Bridge that we're crossing right now. And it's tracks, one of only a handful of bridges in the world that have shops that actually span the entirety of the bridge. Uh, another famous one that you've probably heard of is the Ponte Vecchio in Florence. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like cute bakeries and little shops and whatnot. And it makes for a really, really cool bridge. In fact, I would say, great bridge. It's a great bridge. bridge for Derek to set up his tripod and get some amazing fall foliage colors behind us with the River Avon and the bridge behind us as well and much of the upper part of Bath. So it's just really pretty to see all of the orange trees right now um, as it is the end of October. And Derek, how are you feeling about these photos? Let's we'll see, I haven't taken one yet. Do you think it's going to be good though? I surely hope so. <laughs> he doesn't want to jinx it, clearly. But, uh, I mean, how could you not get some really great ones with this fall foliage? One quick note that we wanted to maybe add about visiting Bath is, so this is Derek and my, I think, like, fifth time coming here. Uh, we love, love, love it here. But I will say it's noticeable that a lot of the people around here do dress up a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of high fashion retail stores around and a lot of opportunities for, like, high tea. So the two of us definitely prefer to wear a little bit more of our elevated clothing that we bring on our trips when we're here. Right now, for example, I'm wearing like a nice blouse and, and my red jeans and my black leather boots, booties. Um, Derek's also wearing his brown leather shoes today, um, just to make sure that we are not, you know, wearing cool something <laughs> maybe that we wouldn't necessarily want to if we decide that we want to go into high tea or something like that. So that's one thing I, that I would recommend to travelers is to maybe consider at least wearing two baths the things that you maybe feel are a little bit more elevated in your travel wardrobe and then if you want to bring some more casual clothes or waterproof clothes like we did we ended up bringing our Merrill waterproof shoes in the car and that way we have access to them if it does start pouring rain or something like that. looks really interesting. It's called... Nibbles. It, it carries a cheese brand called the Stinking Bishop. That bishop must have been stinky.
loads of churches and baths, but only one abbey. Abbey something. Abbey normal. <laughs> you got me an abnormal brain. Name that movie. That's the um, bar that we sat at the picnic tables outside of on our first visit to Mass. And we met these locals and they told us that Nicolas Cage not only owns one house, but two houses in Bath. That's my source, is just two local guys at a bar, but we believed him. So on Derek and my first trip to Bath together, we actually stayed at this hotel. It used to be a Best Western, now it's just called the Abbey Hotel. Maybe it's still a Best Western and they're hiding it, I don't know. But um, it was probably like a three-star hotel, nothing too fancy, but this location is fantastic oh my gosh um, so it's really hard to beat and plus there's like this really cool pub right next door there's like two really cool pubs yeah. next door actually and all in all very nice if you're doing a bus tour of the Cotswolds one picks up actually right over there so really really easy centrally located there's also a also bath ghost took, tour we took the train into town and the train station is really close too so you can just walk in the station if you don't have a ton of luggage. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. Derek was mentioning the bath ghost tour, which was, that was cool. Yeah, so we did a, like a haunted bath walking tour at night, which was nifty. Uh, it's the, the authentic, genuine bath stops. Oh yes, we're back here to that rightful spot under this, the largest bonsai tree here in Bath. And <laughs> what just happened was the bad, naughty people used to be brought down here um and what else i mean bath's just small generally and very walkable so don't be afraid to come here and put on your walking shoes yeah bring walking shoes probably don't wear heels especially because of all these cobblestones and uneven footways but um it's a really quaint town you guys would love it so right behind me here is Sally Lund's house, which is the oldest house in Bath, and you can get a like pie there. Go, it's like they have a restaurant down there, um, and a museum as well. So something cool to check out if you have a little time in Bath and want to go see a very old home. stayed in Bath together um, years ago, and we stayed at that hotel I already mentioned. Derek took a picture of me standing right under this. And I'm so upset because I can't recreate it because there's that big piece of scaffolding in the way. Don't you hate that? Nope. I tried, guys. I tried to give you a little sneak peek into the bath, but like, nope. Nope, can't <laughs> do it. Ah, short arms. Ah, I tried. I promise I tried. <laughs> I wish I, I have to take a picture of you trying. <laughs> Derek's trying to sn sneak everybody into <laughs> the bath, just not us. <laughs> all of you guys, all of you guys maybe could see, just not us. And now it's time for history. On this trip, we didn't have the chance to make it to the world famous ancient Roman baths. So we're relying on some footage from the last time we visited back in 2018. The first thing to know about Bath is that it is the only natural hot spring in all of Britain. So it's no wonder that the ancient Romans chose to establish a thriving cultural center here, complete with a sprawling temple complex dedicated to the goddess Minerva. Constructed around 60 AD, the original Bath complex would have been well below the modern street level, as subsequent civilizations have continued to build upon the foundations of the past. Romans, followed by the Anglo-Saxons, the Normans, and on to modern times. In addition, the original Roman baths would not have been open to the elements and instead would have benefited from a roof covering the pools. That's the reason the water appears green today, since the sun fosters growth of algae in the water. Speaking of water, 
Before you get tempted to take the plunge into the baths, remember that the Romans had a habit of building with lead, and not just with their paint. These guys use it in everything, including piping and aqueducts. So there's a very unhealthy level of lead in the pools here, making a dip in the bath strictly prohibited. The museum is a standout attraction when visiting Bath, and well worth the price of admission. Handy audio tours in a number of languages make the self-guided tours easy to do and well worth the time. This, along with complimentary hourly guided tours offered by knowledgeable staff, makes a memorable and informative experience that covers far more than just the bathing habits of ancient Romans. Be sure to check out the Roman runes throughout the museum that is beyond the pool you see in these videos, including the flowing surplus water traveling from the sacred spring into the Roman Great Drain and into the river beyond. Okay, so for anybody who's looking for toilets, department stores are usually a good bet uh, if you can't find any public ones to use. So that's what we're doing. We're in one of my favorite department stores in England. We're in Debenham, in Bath. And it looks like we're in luck. Check that out. Toilets. So as it does in England, it has begun to rain. Shocking, I know. So there's one of these in like every single town, these next doors that we've been to. And the other day I was saying to Derek where maybe we should go to find outdoors clothes, we should try next. And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, you haven't seen this in every place that we have been? And he's like, I don't look at stores. Duh. Okay, it's raining, but people are still waiting in line to go see the Roman baths. Check out that reflection. Ish. We are in the search of a nice pub. Again, guys, do not just stay indoors when it rains because in the UK, a lot of times it'll rain, it'll stop, the sun will come out, you can get out and actually do some stuff for a while. If it starts raining, just go find a pub. That's what we do. So at this time of night, which is 5.45, it feels like midnight, um, there's nobody here. There's a lot of day trippers that come to Bath and leave when all the shops close. So we kind of have the place to ourselves right now. It's awesome. Check that out. There's like a reflection. Alright guys, so we are here at the Crystal Palace in Bath. It's a Fuller's pub and we escaped the rain. We've been drying out a little bit. We're enjoying some pints before we leave our time here at Bath. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to make it to Royal Crescent today. Um, Eliz is having a Thatcher's Gold as usual. I am having some type of Costco, but I'm not sure which because I can't understand what they say every time they say it. They've now, two people have now said it twice. Yeah, people have said it to me two to three times at this point. I've had them repeat themselves. Still not sure what it is. Sounds but, a little like Buckeye. Yeah, it's kind of like Bucks or something, but it's really good. And uh, yeah, we're excited to get back to our Airbnb later in Bristol and hopefully explore the Cotswolds tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you can follow along with all of our future videos, whether we're here in the UK or elsewhere. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers. Happy travels. Bye. <laughs> hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.